Hello again, everybody. This is Joe Larson. And you're watching the 505 on Racing Show. Welcome. Welcome to another fun-filled hour of race talk, chant, rant, whatever you want to call it. Some results from uh, Kansas. Um, some good stuff. Uh, before I begin, I just want to uh, say this Saturday at the Thompson Motorsports Park up in Thompson, Connecticut, I will be driving a vintage modified, thanks to uh, the Basic Brothers. Um, uh, I don't know why I'm driving a vintage modified. I, I didn't think I was that old. I never drove a modified in competition, so I guess I'm, I, I qualifies me to drive a vintage modified. So I'm going to be doing that. It'll be my first event. Um, now, you know, it's, it's funny in, in talking to people who do this. I thought these guys just ride around. No, these guys race. These guys race these things for, like, for real. And I guess it's, it's really for bragging rights because there's no payoff and there's no trophy at the end, no plaque that says you're the winner. But you know, these guys take this serious. And, and, and like anything you do, you should take serious, I, I guess. But I'm, I'm a just-for-fun type of guy. In fact, that's the name of my bowling team. It's just for fun. Because we do things for fun. When you get to a certain age in life, you have nothing left to prove. And uh, so you just go out and have a good time. Um, you know, when, when I bowl, I'm not looking to be on the Pro Bowlers Tour. I'm just looking to bowl. I don't care if I bowl an 80 or a 180. I still have a great time. I'm there with friends and, and whatnot, and it's all good. And, and that's my plan that when, this weekend at Thompson Motorsports Park. And then the plan is uh, just a race in the afternoon, and we're going to probably head to the New London Waterford Speed Bowl. Um, and display the car there as, as well. So I'm not really sure which car I'll be driving. Um, it's one of two. I, I'm not really sure. I just know that uh, um, Sal Accardi Jr. is one of the drivers as well uh, for this team, and, and he kind of gets first dibs as he's been their regular driver for quite some time. So I'll be uh, driving the second car, and uh, it, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I get to, to use my nice new pretty ASI race uniform. Um, uh, in competition and not just maybe a practice lap or two or we'll be in on pit road. So I'm looking forward to that. There will be video, maybe. No, I'm only kidding. There'll be video. Uh, my, my cameraman will be there. My in radio cameraman will be there taking some video. So we're going to have a good time with that. And uh, Thompson Motorsports Park. If you're up in the area and you want to stop in, I think uh, you want to have a good chuckle. It'd be good to, good to see you guys. My, my crew chief is going to, from the, the, the modified to it, will be on hand as well. Um, giving me pointers as to what to do, what not to do, as I have, um, let's see, I, I haven't been in a, in a race car competitively uh, since 20, I'm going to say 2011, uh, where I drove a truck race uh, here on Long Island. Actually, I drove two truck races that year. I uh, drove the, the truck owned by Bobby Pease in a truck Enduro. And I, you know, and, and for those who don't know what Enduros are, Enduros are usually bunch of cars on a racetrack and it's so many laps and so much time whichever comes first and uh, th the evenings that I drove these these two truck events um, there were 50 lappers and th this was racing man it, it's it, we weren't just riding around bumping and banging pushing people it, this was good hard clean racing and and the funny thing was and, and, and I say funny is it wasn't my truck Obviously, it belonged to a, a gentleman uh, by the name of Bobby Pease, who so willfully lent it to me uh, on a handshake. Here you go, go have some fun. And here I was, I was afraid to wreck it, because um, I'm not good with putting things back together. Uh, so <laughs> I kind of just raced. I just, if I had a spot, I took it. If I didn't, I didn't. Uh, I followed a guy for a bunch of laps. I ran alongside of somebody for a bunch of laps. And, and, I, and all of a sudden, it's, I see the halfway to go, and I'm, I'm like in the top five. I'm like, this is great. Um, this, this, is, this is all good. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'm looking forward to this Saturday at the Thompson Motorsports Park. It's going to be a long day, but well worth it. So um, vintage racing. And, and you know what? I'll tell you what. Uh, it, it's something that you can do for fun. I'm not there to prove anything to anybody. Um, the, the evil eyes aren't going to be on me. So let's see if he could do this. It's just to go out and do some laps and have some fun with the other vintage drivers. So, like I said, we'll have a, a full report on Monday and, and, and hopefully some, some good, decent video uh, to go into it. So, uh, looking forward to it. Now, the chat room, as you see, the chat room is a little different. So, uh, actually, it's a lot different, but um, it, it, I could read it. It's good. So, um, not that I couldn't read the other one. They just had to make it real big so I could read it, but it's all good. Anyway, what's going on? A lot of stuff going on with racing. And one of the things I wanted to talk about 
uh, I, as everybody knows, I, I'm, I'm in the social media. I, I'm, I'm reading, I'm looking, I'm, I'm posting. And a, a driver got on, on the local media. I'm not going to say who, who we are when I say the local, the social media. Got a driver got on, and I guess there was some things at his local racetrack, and um, he, I guess he kind of got verbally beat up for a move that he made. And, and, and the question was, when, when, how do I put this? When do I have the spot? That was the question. Now, I'm not, as anybody knows me, I'm not one of those guys um, that, that was a top running car. I, I was a mid to mid to mid back and pack at best, um, you know, a couple of top tens, uh, maybe one or two top fives in my whole life. But, you know, it's, it's funny, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to step out of the box here for a minute. When you look at professional baseball, and that's, that's, I love baseball. I love professional baseball, Major League Baseball. When you look back, and look back when I was a kid following baseball, the Baltimore Orioles had to be one of the best teams throughout the 70s. They were managed by a guy who couldn't make it into the majors, Earl Weaver. The guy just, he was a, he was a career minor leaguer. He wasn't a good hitter, wasn't a good fielder, but he was a good manager, and he was a good manager of people. And he was able to build teams and, and see talent in people and, and make recommendations and change people and, and make them play better. So over the years, I've seen a lot of race car drivers, a lot of different styles of racing, a lot of different racetracks, different type classes of cars. And getting back to this, this individual's question, when do you have the spot? Now, some people think you have the spot because you got a wheel in, or you got a wheel up to the door, you got to, you know, yeah, you do. You have that spot, but you don't have the position. And what do I mean by that? Just because you have a guy here and you're going into a corner like this, and, and I'm sure the, the camera's picking up my hands, and because you're here, that doesn't mean you have the spot. Here, you don't have the spot. You have that, that section of racetrack, but this guy here isn't supposed to, oh, he's got the spot, let me get out of the way. He's going to hold you down, or she's going to hold you down, and you're going to earn that pass. And then, then you're going to insure it. And, and you know, an old time driver told me um, years ago, he said, because when, when I first started doing this stuff, I, I had a pass you, and like, like, boom, that was my goal. Oh, no, I got a spot, boom, and I'd go. And nine times out of ten, that hole closed by the time I got to it, or I wrecked me, or the me and the other guy. And we would sit there after the race, and I'd look at my mangled race car, and the guy would say to me, he goes, here's how you pass the car. You get a wheel in, you get the fender to the, wind, to, the to the door, you get wheel to wheel, and you get a little bit out. Maybe you're going to go up a little bit, but you're not going to wreck them. You're going to go up a little bit. And then when you got it, you got it. It might take a couple of laps. And that's one of the, it's patience. And, and that's what I was trying to, to, to convey to this individual in the social media, it's, it's, it's a couple of pieces of the car at a time. Because what's going to happen? You're going to take this guy out, you're going to push him out of your way because you think you have the spot, and, and the other guy thinks he has the spot, and, and what happens? You got, you got wrecked stuff, and, and if you're not wrecked, then that guy is, the official's going to put you to the back, and I believe that's what happened to this individual. And uh, you know, the worst thing you want to do, and this took me a long time to learn, you don't want to tick off the guys you're racing with. Because race car drivers have a good memory, a real good memory. And they're going to remember, all right, that guy, all right, well, he got me. He got me last week, three weeks ago, last year, a couple of years ago. He got me. I'm going to get him back now. And, and, and that's what happens. And that's what happens. And the, the key is, with, with, with any race division, whether you're in the, 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 a touring series, a feature division, entry level, or somewhere in the middle, it's, it's earning the respect on the racetrack. And that's missing. And, and you see that in all levels. Even at the top levels, is the respect is missing. Respect for, the, for, the, for your fellow competitors. Nobody likes fixing race cars. And you know, let, let's forget about the, the top three, the, the Camper World Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Sprint Cup Series. Those guys have a fleet of race cars in the shop, and if one gets wrecked, they just go get another one. And nine times out of ten, the driver's not 
in the shop helping put it back together. There's paid employees that do that. But in your touring levels, and especially in, 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 the, in the modified level, and your weekly, when, when you're wrecking it, you're putting it back together. You don't want to do that. You want to spend your week getting your car better, not fixing what was broken. Because of a bonehead move by you, the driver, or a bonehead move by a fellow competitor, you want to do that. Especially in today's day, it costs a lot of money to field a race car, and it costs a lot of money to keep it going. And you know what? A lot of us don't have that expendable cash that we once had. Sponsorship is drying up. Sponsorship isn't what it once was. I, I see drivers giving away quarter panels for, for a tire that you're going to get a week, maybe two out of. But you're going to give that guy, well, I'm going to give him that quarter panel because oh, maybe he'll buy you a tire again down the road. You know? And that's, that's the thing. So patience, patience on the racetrack. Pass a car a little at a time. Hey, look, if the hole's wide open and, and, and you know you're faster, then go, you take it. But when you're, you know, you don't want to do that, the old saying, what is it, eight wheels turn better than four going into a corner where you just bang up and you just drive through the guy. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Because what's going to happen at the next corner, that guy might back off and he's going to hit you so hard, he's going to use your rear bumper as his, his brake pedal. Your head's going to rock. And after like a bunch of laps of that, you might have a headache. So, you know, so if that, if, if that guy's watching everybody from his crew, think about that. Patience. Patience. Sometimes 15, 20 laps isn't a long time to make it happen. And you know, to win a race, you have to be there at the end. And if you wrecked because you, you decided you were going to push somebody out of the way and they decided they're going to push you back, or the officials are going to take the spots away from you because of rough riding, you know, I, I applaud officials to do that. You know, I applaud them. They need to be more consistent across the board, across the country with, with rough riding calls. And, and what do I mean by that? See, first of all, I always felt that if, if you're going to be an official, you should have at least driven for five, six, eight, ten years. So you know the difference between an accident and rough ride, number one. And number two, so that you can understand when a driver comes up to you screaming and yelling and cursing and making references to your family that it's not directed at you, although you think it is, it's the frustration that this competitor had because he, he didn't pay his electric bill because he wanted to buy tires for the race car because he knew he'd have a good finish and he could pay an electric bill on Monday, or he's so frustrated because he just worked 70 hours putting that race car back together from some bonehead move from the week before and somebody else bonehead moves him. You're frustrated. Some officials who never race don't understand that. And, and I wish they would, they would at least step back and think about that. Let the driver scream and yell. Let him scream and yell. And the longer you wait to talk to that guy, the longer that, that it's, few, it's just building. The rage is building and building and building. And by the time you get to him, you're going to say like something wrong, and the guy's going to snap, and then you're going you know, to be all upset. So just think about that for a moment. You know, as, as an official, if you're an official at your local racetrack and you're watching or listening, you know, think about that. And some guys do that. Some guys and gals can do that. They're, they're very good at it. You know, and they, and they try to understand. But then again, sometimes their hands are tied by promoters or, or higher ups at, at, at their racetrack. So, you know, think about that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, some ongoing stuff in the MRS series with a particular driver and where they're headed when we come back. It's Christmas Dick, and if inravio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, Inravio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is Inravio.com.
Hey, I'm, I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Mark Willie. We're uh, some of the Proto Men. If we see you without this bracelet, we get punched in the d But if you have this bracelet from nradio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on, or else. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Hey, welcome back. Yes, 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 the MRS. Uh, Valenti Modified Recent Series. Um, some stuff going on there, some stuff that I kind of talked about last week in regards to uh, modified driver um, Tommy Barrett. Tommy Barrett, as we all, as we reported last week, and from information from Ray State, Connecticut, was, was arrested on April 17th for driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And uh, although NASCAR, I'm going to read what it, what it says here. Um, according to Ray State, Connecticut, the uh, Valenti Modified Racing Series officials are reviewing the status of driver Tommy Barrett, Jr. Barrett, as we discussed last week, was arrested April 17th, as I just said. It will amend to Connecticut for DUI, driving under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. Um, although he has not been penalized uh, by NASCAR, Barrett lost his ride in the Hour Motorsports NASCAR wheel and modified tour uh, car. And, uh, and now he's, um, NASCAR, I should say, NASCAR will not allow Barrett to compete while a formal investigation is under review. Now, Modified Racing Series Director Warren Olson, uh, he's the series director, says management in the series has not received an entry blank for Barrett for the upcoming event, but series owner Jack Bateman is in the process of reviewing the situation. Now, the situation is he's been charged with, with this DUI, driving under the influence of drugs and alcohol. He has yet to be convicted. So I got to say, you know, this knee-jerk reaction, I, I can understand a, a car owner, as a, a former car owner, saying, hey, you know what? You go take care of business. I'm going to put somebody else in my race car. Because it's all about image and sponsors and all that kind of good stuff. And, and you know what? Yeah, it's maybe, just maybe, this could all work out. It could just work out. And he's cleared and whatever the case may be, and he goes back to his, goes back to his racing. But how do you do that? Do you, do you take the guy, you're replacing the guy, say, all right, look, everything's clear, you're out, he's in, back in. I, I don't think, I don't think uh, Mr. Auer is going to do that from Auer Motorsports. So that leads me, goes back to, let's go back 20, 30 years, back in the day. Back in the day when modifieds were modifieds, and it was all good. And I can remember going to Martinsville for the modified race, going to Martinsville and going to the old Dutch Inn up the road, and these guys would be in that bar in the Dutch Inn, drinking it up, drinking it up, drinking it up, and, and having a good old time. And then all of a sudden, the sun's coming up. And they go back to the hotel room, they take a shower, have a cup of coffee, and go racing. See, back then, back 20, 30 years ago, there wasn't this big emphasis on driving while intoxicated and driving under the influence. Back then, I can remember being in high school, my buddy's getting pulled over, and I had, you know, they had the, the what did that, the Boone's Farm apple wine or something in there in between their legs, and the cops would make them dump it out and then drive them home. You know, and, and take their keys and make them take a nap. And they don't do that today. Today you have two, you have two beers and, and, you know, at a place and you leave and bam, they pull you over, you're going. You're going for a little vacation, at least overnight, and then it's going to be costly. So anyway, going back to Tommy Barrett Jr., you know, 
Who knows? Did he have two drinks, two beers? Well, whatever the case is, we won't know. But that gives them a driving under the influence. That, that could charge them. You tell me, like one person, I'm, I'm, maybe one, maybe two. I'm, I'm going to say most of us at one time or another have had a couple of drinks and driven home or driven somewhere or got in their car. Because what's a couple of drinks? How many of us have gone to their local racetrack, sat through the races all night long, the races end, you go down to the pit area, and who has a barbecue, they have a beer, they have a chicken, they have hamburgers, and, and you have one or two beers in, in, a, in an hour span, you get in your car. Technically, at least in the state of New York, you are considered DUI. Does that make you have to lose your job? Does that have to, if you're a race car driver, should you lose your ride because you had two beers? I, I don't know, and, and I understand what his car owner is thinking. He's got people he's got to answer to, sponsors and, and whatnot, but how do, you, how do you do that to somebody until they're found guilty, until you find out what exactly, what exactly did this individual do? What did they do? Okay, were they stoned off their head? I don't know. I don't personally know Tommy Barrett Jr. I only know him from going as an official inspecting his race car and my interaction was more with the crew chief and the car owners over the times that he was racing with the, the Modified Tour. I never sat down with the guy and, 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 and had a chat. I never went in his trailer during rain delays and, and had you know, a sandwich or breakfast or whatever. It's, it's I, I, don't, I don't know. You know I, I don't know what he did. I wasn't there. And, and, and hopefully this all gets cleared up and, and he's back driving a race car. But you know, now, now the, the snowball's starting. Okay, now the Valenti Modified Series question, whoa, whoa. You know, and as Warren Olson stated, it, you know, it, it, it's two weeks before the next event. For them. I don't remember where they are, but it's two weeks before the event and it's, he hasn't put it in, 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 a, in an entry blank. Well, most of them wait to the last week anyway, so. Well, well, it's interesting to see how that pans out. We're going to keep following this. I'm going to stay with this one because this, this goes back to the, the whole Kurt Busch thing, too. I said from day one, innocent till proven guilty. Innocent till proven guilty. This is America. This is how it was. our forefathers set this country up when, when they sat down and wrote the Constitution of the United States. You're innocent till proven guilty. Yeah, there's been some Supreme Court cases over the years that, that have back that up, the Miranda rights and, and what were added, because you, know, you can't be arrested and, and not be told you're a charge or you have a right. You have certain rights. Um, but I, I'm just, you know, now this guy, he'll be lucky if he can go to his little, local little go-kart thing and, and pay his $10 and raise go-karts, because you know, he's going to have this thing with him. But anyway. And speaking of the Modified Racing Series, uh, Airborne Park Speedway and the Valenti Modified Racing Series have mutually agreed to terminate a scheduled race on May 30th so as not to conflict with the NASCAR Wheel and Modified event at Connecticut's New London Waterford Speed Bowl. Uh, the, speed, uh, the Speed Bowl event was added after the Modified Tour schedule was made and the Valente Modified Series was made, and of course after the new ownership got the approval from the courts for that make that purchase and let it go through. No alternate date has been scheduled at the Airborne Park Speedway at this time. Um, so that's, uh, you know, it's funny, they do stuff like this down south, and like Caraway will not compete against Bowman Gray. They won't hold a tour race because they're not getting any cars. There's only 16 or 18 cars anyway. So we'll see what happens with that. But, uh, uh, I, you know, a lot of competitors race both series. And, and this goes to my, and I've said this over and over again, they do that because they're racers. They want to race every week as often as they can. And to have a schedule where you race, you're off three weeks, you race, you're off a month, you race, you're off two, three weeks. If there's another series that accept your race car, you're going to go race them. And, and that's what's happened at some of the local racetracks where, and I say local, I don't mean my local racetrack, I don't have one. I mean across the country where they have, you know, loose schedules. When I say a loose schedule, they don't race every week. And that's why now you could go to another racetrack and get what they call the state points. As long as you're in that state, you can go get points and they're going to count. They take your best 16 or 18 finishes. So, you know, the only problem is, you know, and I feel bad for Long Island guys, because years ago they were part of the New England region, which, you know, Connecticut was a lot closer. 
now that it's a state thing, so the Long Island guys have to travel upstate New York, and, and, and it's a you know, seven, eight hour run. So um, I hope NASCAR takes a look at that as well and, and regionalize it again and not do it by states. Because it's tough. I feel bad for Long Island guys because they, they got to run their regular local racetrack and they, gotta, they only have so many events and they run double features. And, you know, and that's okay. It counts as extra races, but it, they, they're not getting the points and they're not getting the double payoffs. They're just getting what they're getting. They're getting, it's, I, you know, I, and the way it was explained to me, the first, it's, it's twin features. So the first feature, based on the, 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 the car counts and, and whatnot, the first feature is half points and the second feature is half points. When I say half, half it's, a, let's say the race pays 50 points, or you earn 50 points a race, it's 25 and 25. And the payoff too, if the payoff is $1,400, it's 700 for the first one win and seven for the second one. So. Um, uh, I don't know. So anyway, chat room, guys and gals, it's 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 new. <laughs> let's let's. <laughs> it's new to me too, folks. And you know me. Anybody that knows me close. Oh, I'm not good with change, but I'm I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. Well, anyway, so that's what's going on there. So we we'll go. What else we got? Oh uh, yes. Um, yeah, we're gonna hold off on this a little bit. But I want to get back to this real quick. This this MRS thing, um, the MRS series. How did it evolve? How did these other modified series evolve? The late Tom Baldwin told me a couple of months before he, he, his tragic accident, he said to me, he goes, if another series opened up, we wouldn't have 45 cars on the tour. And, and I kind of said, because him and I could play devil's advocate with each other, and, and I said, why do you think that, Tom? Why do you think? And he goes, because if you have a choice, you're going to go with the one that A, treats you better, and the cost is less to run. And your cost, if your cost is less to run, your, your payout ratio, you might get less of a payout, but you have a heck of a lot less cost involved as well. And he told me, and he said that to me, he says, you're going to see 20 to 25 cars on a tour. Back then, we were getting 45, and at some race, we were going over 50 on the modified diet. And I say we, we were like, I'm still in it. Um, we were getting a lot of cars, and it was, there were nights or weekends. We were sending home more cars but not qualifying, they were racing in the race. And, and now, the, although the car counts in the last two events look pretty solid, it's still not what it once was. But anyway, the late Tom Baldwin said, another series comes into play, they're gonna end up getting more cars. And, and you, know, you look back and, and, and he was right. And, and I think NASCAR needs to take a look at that. NASCAR needs to go and, and, and talk to some of these drivers and, and not sugarcoat it when they go back to the, to the corporate table. They need to go back and, and talk to these competitors that used to be tour regulars on the NASCAR tour and find out why they're running these other series and say, hey, you know, what's going on? Get the little pad and pen. What's going on? Right, uh, this is why, this is why, this is why. And write it down and take a serious look. Then go back to the boardroom on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whenever they have their meetings and say, hey, listen, I spoke to these car owners that run this other series that used to be with us, and this is why they're doing it. What can we do to entice them? It's not always more money in the payoff. Yes, that would be good, but it's not always the answer. And, and fans in the seats and race cars in the pits go hand in hand. We're gonna talk about that when we come back. What's up guys, we're Scan Off Fair and we're here with Enravio. If they catch you at a show with one of these bracelets, you will win a hundred bucks. That's a lot of money. So get a bracelet. Do whatever it takes to get that. Hit them up online. <laughs>
The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Ravio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Ravio.com. Hey, I'm, I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Marshall Weller. We're uh, some of the proto men. If we see you without this bracelet, we get punched in the d But if you have this bracelet from inradio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on, or else. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, a lot of chat room discrepancy stuff going on in here. Oh, wow. Anyway, so what are we talking about? Ah, oh, yeah, fans in the seats, cars in the pits. Area Auto Racing's Ernie Saxon wrote in the Area Auto Racing News about Kevin Harvick's discussion with the press recently. And um, Kevin Harvick's discussion had to do with the lack of interest <laughs> in the races. Um, Harvick was quoted as saying, the schedule is stagnant. Harvick also feels some tracks which have two dates should only get one. A lot of people sit back and say, whoa, 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 whoa. How, how do you do that? Who do you take a date away from? And, and I, th I, I was wondering, when I first I said, ah, well, come on, you know, you, you go to this track twice, this track. And I'm like, you know what? You know what? Here's, here's, here's the thing. You're not getting the people like you used to get. I can remember when I first started going to Bristol, it was a waiting list forever to get tickets. Forever. Now you can walk up that day and get tickets. If you go there, and I'm not picking on Bristol, I'm just using Bristol as an example. Now you have one race there. Now that it's the old supply and demand thing kicks in. Wait, whoa. You know, I'm not going to the, the, this race. Well, I plan to go on to the next one, but... If there's only one, I gotta go. I don't want to miss out. So it 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 just is one of those things, and and it's 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 tough. You see a lot of empty seats in these racetracks, and and part of the deal too, and, and I believe, is when the racetracks, when the when I'm talking to racetracks, the, the the top ones where they have cup events, every, you know, every week, when they went to this package deal, why they do that? My opinion my opinion only. They went to this package deal and they said, you know what, back when the Bush guys were running and they called them the Bush cars and now it's the Xfinity, when they ran on Saturday, there weren't a lot of people in the grandstands. TV's big, TV's putting up big money. TV says, we want people in the stands, how are we gonna fix this? So what do they do? Okay, you get your renewal thing in the mail, you open it up, whoa, I gotta buy a package now. I gotta buy Saturday's ticket too. I don't go to Saturday's race. I'm, I'm traveling to get there for Sunday. I can't take off all those days. It didn't matter. So you, 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 you won off and boom, you, you, you didn't renew and other people took your tickets and then they realized. And I can remember, I stopped doing the Daytona thing, you know, buying tickets and, and gave up my package. And I had that pack, I had my seats for a long time. And every year you got moved. I started in the Palmer section coming out of turn four. No, actually, the Lockhart section, way down by turn one. And then I went to the Palmer, then I went to this one, then I went to Petty. Then I was in the Nextel Tower, as they called it at Daytona. And uh, be, the seats behind me were the suite. Start, finish line right in front of me. I worked my way into those seats. It took years. 
And, and, and I had another bunch of tickets on the back stretch, and when they put up turn two tower, because that was the only place I can get tickets. That was actually my first year. But I never gave those up, and my boys would use those when they came with us. They would, they would use those, or I'd give them away or sell them. So, so anyway, getting back to what this is. So now all of a sudden, I'm, I'm happy going, going to the race on Sunday. I'm happy. This is great. It's a good thing. I have my next tower seats. I'm all good to go. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, I get my renewal, and I got to pick two other events. I could do the duels, the truck race, or the, or the Xfinity Series race back then nationwide and then or Bush. And I'm like, well, I gotta pick three. And all right, so I do the math and it was a lot of money. So I did it for a year or two and I finally said, no, 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 I can't, I'm not doing this no more. And that's what's happened. I think a lot of people don't wanna do this package thing, but TV wants bodies in the seats. And that's why this has happened. This is why they've done this. So is, is the schedule a little stagnant? I, I think it is. I think it's time to, to shake the schedule up a little bit. Um, you know, the old Southern 500, as they call it, at Darling, was, was always the same weekend. Then all of a sudden, they moved it. It was, it was Labor Day weekend forever, forever. It was hot out. It was, it was nasty. It was, a, it was a whole big thing. It was, it was when men drove these cars. And, you know, at the end, it was relief drivers and all that kind of good stuff. But they don't do that anymore. Now, they, they run Texas at night because it's too hot. Well, you know what? Instead of freezing your buns off in Daytona in February, run Texas in February. Just saying. You know? And it's not like years ago, back in the 60s. These guys, when they left the house, these the Bobby Allisons, the Richard Petty's, David Pearsons, when they got, they loaded that race car in the hauler, and, and, and they went up, the, they, won, they actually, the first years and years back in the 60s, Riverside in California, Riverside was the first race of the year. And then they came back, they worked their way back, and then Daytona, and then they worked up the coast, right, into New York, New Jersey, New York, Long Island. They came to Islip Speedway, as Richard Petty called it, Islip. They'd run the Islip Speedway, and then they'd go out to Bridgehampton, hop across, go into Connecticut, work their way up, boom, shoot across the top part, end up going across New York State, running those tracks upstate New York in Ohio, Michigan, running 50, 60 races a year. Those guys didn't get home. Sometimes their families would meet them somewhere. Linda Petty loaded the kids in the station wagon and, and, and head up sometimes to, to catch them, try to catch a race somewhere. And a lot of the races were in the Carolina areas within you know, an hour and a half, two hours of the, of the Charlotte area. So there was a lot of races down there. And, and, and even the points were different. The points, the points for the longest time were based on what the race paid. So a lot of drivers went to the higher paying races to get the most amount of points. You see, some guys, they could, only, they could run maybe a third of the races because they, they only went to the big paying races, whereas some of the guys, they didn't want to run the super speedways for whatever reason. They only ran the smaller tracks. The smaller tracks had a lower payoff. Therefore, the lower tracks had a less points. This point thing, this point battle has been going on for years and years and years and years. And, and how, do you, how do you pick a, a winner? Should it be the guy with the most points at the end? I always said, the guy with the most points, that amassed the most points, that should be the winner. You know, the chase, I was never a fan of the chase. You know, it's like a playoff even, kind of. Um, but the guy with the most points should be winning the race. You shouldn't, okay, let's wipe up the points and the top X number, 15, 16, 4, whatever it is, you know, you're in, everybody else, you know, you don't have a shot at it no more. Some of them didn't have a shot at it in July, but that's, that's a whole other story. But just the way it was, and there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And, and Kevin Harvick, I, I, I have to say he's right. It's time to shake this schedule up. I would love to see um, some more short tracks. And when I say short tracks, I'm not talking half mile. I'm talking three-eighths. I'd like to see some of those. I'd like to see some more of those. I'd like to see less super speedway racing, unless they take the restrictor plates out. Take the restrictor plates out, put the, 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 the racing back in the hands of the driver, and now you're going to see some passing. You're not going to see this three by three by three by three by three, where two tenths of a second separate the first place guy and a 15th place guy, and because somebody bobbles, half the field is out. Get to restrict the place out of these guys in the super speedways and make it happen. Make bring back cold, they were called race cars for a reason. They called race cars for a reason. So I don't know. I just don't know. It's it's. I'm just one guy that has a little show and you know and I and I get to do my little rant and they're not going to listen to anything I have to say. But 
I think it's something to think about. And, and a lot of us, a lot of us don't go to those, some of these races anymore and because it just cost, because of time, and, and, and because it's gotten out of control what it costs to go to a race. Anyway, um, another thing that's, that's bothered me this weekend, I read in the social media that the Long Island Modified Maniac, Jim Schaefer, announced this past weekend he will not continue his efforts after this season for the tri track series and, and putting money into these races to get bigger payouts for some of these drivers. Well, I went on to read, the primary reason is negativity. Negativity. Negativity by competitors, by fans, by fence grabbers. Negativity to a guy who who goes in his own pocket to make sure people go racing. And, and I'm going to tell you what, him and I were talking last, last season, I forget what track we were at, we were talking, and, and one of the things he, he, he got, he, he did, he reached into his own pocket to put money into to a person. I said, yeah, i got to ask you why you do this. Why? He goes, well, you see, when I go to these hotels, I get points, and so technically I'm staying for free at the hotel, but I take the money it would have cost me and I, and I dole it out amongst the because that's what I like to do. And for competitors and, and owners and crew people and people who have no business even open their mouth, to get this guy so upset that he's, he's done. As of right now, that could change. But as of what he posted in, in the social media this past weekend, he's done. He's done and he's going to put his efforts somewhere else. Another good guy bites the dust. Another good guy. Another good guy bites the dust because of negativity. Negativity. And, and, and I responded to one of those things on there. I says, you know, uh, it's one of the reasons that I, I just, I, I can't enjoy it anymore on the local level. I can't enjoy it. I just don't. Um, uh, and, and it goes back to what I said earlier in the show. It's a respect thing. And I'm not saying that, you know, they should roll out the red car because Joe Lawson walked into the pit gate. I'm not saying that. So don't, don't think that. Don't think I'm, you know, oh, oh, this guy's full of himself. But you know what? I, I was involved with that, this sport. I've been involved with this sport as a, as a crew guy, driver, car owner, official for, for close to 40 years. And I have a lot of knowledge in my head when it comes to these things. I may not be able to build a motor. I may not be able to build a transmission. But because I tore off so many right fronts and left fronts over the years, I know how to put them back together. And I also know what's the difference between good race and a bad race. And I know the difference between rough riding and an accident. And you get pushed away, right? You get pushed away by, by how, how can I put it, jealous officials, um, unscrupulous promoters that want you to cheat and play games and overlook things. And you know, that's, that's not how I was brought up. And you know, I color within the lines. A lot of people say, oh, go out of the lines. And you know what, no, I don't, I don't do that. Um, you know, because when I shave every other day, and, and, and I would shave once a month if I can get away with it, when I, I gotta look myself in the mirror. I gotta say, did you do the right thing at that racetrack last night, or whenever, I, whenever it was? I look back and some of the things that, that I had in my control to do as an official, I always look back and say, I did the right thing. I did the right thing, and, and, and this is one of the problems that happens that, you know, the negativity. You try to do the, the right thing. And, and I used to say, you know, at, 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 when I was officiating, you know, back in my local racetrack, you know, there was 150 drivers that signed into the pits on any given night back in the day. And, and I used to say, 144 of them won home hating me. Six of them loved me because they won that night. I was, I was a good guy. But that changed next week. So it was a different six or five, or how many features they ran that night. And negativity. Remember a few months back, a racetrack, a, a racetrack owner closed his racetrack because he couldn't even go to church on Sunday without negativity. People grabbing him after church, before church, during church, during services. Negativity. You know, there was a guy that I didn't like at my local racetrack. Did not like him, still don't like him. He'll never know it, but one of the things he says to me, when it's gone, it's gone. And we're going to be sitting on the wall crying when there's no more racing. And he was right. And, you know, look back over the years. How many racetracks closed? How many racetracks will never see another race? How many racetracks have the weeds overtaken the pavement that it wouldn't even pay to put back together? 
I had the opportunity a few years ago to walk the track at Deer Park Speedway. One of the UPS drivers told me where it was, and, and I went and I walked the track, and for whatever reason, the weeds weren't growing through the cracks in the pavement. I'm sure it's because all the oil and stuff that was put down over the years, it was just killed any type of growth. But everything, the infield was overgrown with trees. Where the Grand Sands used to be was overgrown with trees. And you could see where the wire was, uh, the thick, thick cable for a retaining wall, where it was at one time our shore put into wood, those you know, pilings into the ground. And I had the opportunity to walk that racetrack, and I was like, wow. If somebody wanted to put a racetrack here, now they couldn't. It was in the middle of a residential neighborhood. But if somebody wanted, they, they couldn't because it's just, it would be, you'd have to start over. And nobody's building new racetracks. We try, but nobody's building, building new racetracks. But I, I don't know. It's, you look back and you say, man, what the heck? And uh, yeah, 39.23, people do, we, they always just change. So yeah, whatever it happens. But anyway. You know, moving forward, you know, I just wish that the, 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 the people would stop complaining about what's going on in the racetrack. Officials don't go to a racetrack today. They're driving out there. They're in their car driving. I think I'm going to do a bad job today. They don't do that. They want to do the best job that they possibly can under the circumstances they have and, and the abilities that they have and the parameters they have to work with with promoters. That's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. They want to do the best job possible. And, and I'll tell you what, you know, I used to get phone calls on Sunday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning after being at the racetrack at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning dealing with issues. You know, the people want to argue with me. People want to scare me. My, I was threatened to be shot. My house was threatened to be burned down. My, one driver called my family and told them they might want to get out because they're going to blow the house up. You know, it's really not worth it. So I don't know. I, I, I give these officials credit. I just wish that uh, things were a little bit different, you know, at least on, on my end, um, moving forward. But anyway, we're going to take a quick break. I'm overdue. When we, when we come back, we'll uh, give the results of Kansas, and then uh, we'll wrap this up when we come back. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in radio.com. Hey, this is Chris Lutz Jake, and if InRadio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. Scan off there, and we're here with Enravio. If they catch you at a show with one of these bracelets, you will win a hundred bucks. That's a lot of money. So get a bracelet. Do whatever it takes to get that. Hit them up online.
<laughs> we're, we're back. Oh, the things you see out of the corner of your eye. What, I don't eat a hot dog. What, what the heck? Oh, man. I had pizza for dinner. I had pizza for dinner. Can you believe that? But anyway. Oh, yes. Oh, well, yeah. Results. Results. Kansas. The Xfinity Series was at Kansas this weekend. Uh, I'm sorry, not the Xfinity. They were off. The Camper World Truck Series was, uh, was uh, at, at Kansas this, uh, this past weekend. Uh, Matt Crafton was the winner. Ryan Newman hopping in the truck finished the second. Johnny Saw the third. Tim Peters was fourth. Cameron Haley was fifth. Daniel Suarez was sixth. Uh, Justin uh, Boston was seventh. Scott Lagasse Jr. eighth. Mason Minnis was ninth. And Daniel Hemrick, former NASCAR Women modified Northern and Southern tour driver, rounded out the top ten. In the Cup Series, Jimmy Johnson was first, Kevin Harvick second, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was third, followed by Jeff Gordon fourth. That's three out of four Hendrick cars. Oh, anyway, Joey Logano from the pole finished fifth, Matt Kenseth sixth, Brad Keselowski seventh, Kurt Busch was eighth, Martin Truex Jr. ninth, and Ryan Newman rounded out the top ten. Rumor has it, Kyle Busch was testing at Daytona, um, getting back after his injuries, and... Uh, uh, he's also been an elite model at some, some tracks down south as well, and uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's a good sign that he's is headed back. We don't know how much sooner, but uh, it would be good to see him back in a car in, eight, in 361. Ah, yes, I know who that is now. Oh, the hot dog, the hot dog thing. And uh, we get tired. For those of you who don't know this story, remember the story, back the late Walt Ed so on. He, he used to hold court in, in, in the office at the end, and we'd go in there and we'd wait for our customers, as we called it. Let's wait for the customers, and who'd knock on the door, who complain about a call, who complain about tech, and have something to say. And, and I'll tell you what, all the years, I, I think out of all the years, only one driver came in and said anything positive. But anyway, this, this guy comes in, this guy, uh, Rich, and he comes in, and uh, the, he has a gripe. And one of the teams just sent us in a tray of hot dogs and hamburgers. And one of these, these hot dogs rolled off the platter, off the desk, onto this greasy, grimy, filthy, dirty floor. And uh, we picked it up and we just put it on the platter, but we all knew in there not to eat it. And the late Walt Edsel, so he's sitting there and uh, he's gonna put some, some mustard and ketchup on his hot dog. And it, and it just came out too fast. Now he took his greasy, grimy hands and he did this, with that. He, he, he scooped it off and he put it on the hot dog that just rolled across the floor. So this competitor comes in to, to complain, and as part of his punishment, he was given this hot dog, and, and he didn't want to eat it. He didn't want to eat it. Oh, I'm good. Oh, no, you got to eat this hot dog. It will be disrespectful. We, we offered you something to eat. Well, he eats his hot dog. We're dying. But it was a funny So We had a good time in my, my man Gravel. It's one of the stories we laugh about every once in a while. you know. And, and then there was the time, uh, Bill Park, when he was racing. Bill Park comes in, and he's livid. He's livid. I missed it. I made a bad, bad call. One of my many bad, bad calls. And he comes in. He's all hot under the collar, slams the door. Comes in. He goes. And, and, and I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm, I'm eating an ice cream sundae from Mr. Sotheby. I'm, I'm there eating this ice cream sundae. Big ice cream sundae, whipped cream, everything. And I'm eating it. That's probably why I was almost 300 pounds. And I'm eating this thing. And he comes in. He's screaming. And it, you missed the call, you! Yeah. I went, you know, Bill, you're right. I absolutely did. I missed that call. And he's like, that! Eh. Oh, so you know you did? Yeah, all right, see you next week. So uh, we had some fun. And then the maggot soup that me and Gravel ate at the LaGrange Inn. It wasn't really maggot soup, but it looked like maggot soup. And um, again, because I'm before we got a couple minutes, you know, we were at the LaGrange for an official's dinner slash. I think it was Jim Cromedy's birthday party, or Bob O'Rourke's, somebody's birthday party, but we had this, we're all at this thing, and the soup gets served, and we're all looking at it, you know, like, so somebody whispers, it looks like maggots. So Gravel takes a spoon. Yep, it's maggots. People, oh, people were bad. People were bad. But, you know, those are the things we look back at and you have fun with. You have fun. We had fun. We had fun. We had fun doing this. We, we, one, one of the head officials at our racetrack, he told us uh, we had two chalkboards. But we were supposed to write the lineup on it. So as drivers came up, we you know, we hold it up. Hold it up. So here's the lineup, your fifth, whatever. 
So we raced, we took the lineups off it. So my buddy, because I was the game, it was my first or second year, my, my buddy, he put order, wrote on his chalkboard, order here, and I wrote on mine, pay here. And you know, and Danny Turbis, one of the one, one of the winningest drivers on Long Island, he comes up the ramp and uh, order here and he goes, I'll have a win. So he comes up to me and says, and, you know, hey, and he drew licorice at me, red licorice, and he and so I said, Is this to go with a status when he goes, I hope this win is to stay, yeah? <laughs> what are you pay here? And uh, he went out of that night and actually won. And uh, he, and he fed us in the trailer after. But those are the things we had fun with back in those days. And I think that fun is missing at the weekly racetracks. That fun is missing. There's, there's people are too stiff. They're trying to please the promoters, which they need to do. But you still have to have fun with the competitors. And you still have to understand when they're, they're hot and bothered and upset. And you still have to put on a good show for the fans. And, and I think that's missing. And, and they need to be consistent with decisions that they make. And you can't wait. And, and this happens across the country. You can't wait for my buddy because I play golf with his father. And you can't wait for this guy because I'm dating his mother. You, you can't do those things. You have to be consistent. As long as you're consistent, like Joe Harmon once said to me, he goes, you know, I didn't agree with every call you made when you were the chief steward. But you made the same call every time. And that's what I did. But anyway. So I'm, they're waving at me in the control room. I guess you know, we don't want to go into overtime here. So um, we're going to wrap this thing up. So I want to thank everybody for, for, for being a part of the show tonight. And, and, and it's, it's always good to talk race with you guys. I'm sure there's going to be another experimental chat room next week. And they're, not, and they're laughing in the control room. We're going to have another experimental chat room. So when we come back next week, we're going to try another one until we get one that fits you know, most of us. But anyway. Thanks again, folks, for everything. Uh, wherever your endeavors may take you this week, please be safe. Please, please be happy. Tell somebody you love them. God bless you all, and we'll see you next week.